On the show today, we take a look at the ferocious action at Phillip Island, Australia, on the World SBK stage. We'll also see behind the scenes of the World SBK in Australia and what goes on during F1 test in Haas Garage. Insurance and riders or driver safety at race meetings in Nigeria under focus. Hello and welcome to the only TV show in Nigeria focused on motorsport. I am Gerard Gogo Fituru Kusare and this is Finish Line. We begin the show today with action from Phillip Island, Australia, where the Superbike World Superbike Championship took place. It's a lot of action, a lot of ferocious and exciting action. Take a look. Race number one of the Yamaha Finance Australian Round. Race number one of 2020. Lights out and away we go on 2020. Great start from Jonathan Ray from P3 on the grid. Looking down the inside line as they head towards turn one. Sykes on the inside of Jonathan Ray. The pair turns, Ray's off! Here comes Scott Ready for second position. But again, there he makes contact with Karen Pesudo. Three down, drama for Ray. Here goes Redding. Redding through to take the race lead from Tom Sykes into turn number one. Old Vandermark comes sliding down the inside for second position as well. Now Razgadiogu wants a piece of the action. It's a question now of who's got enough rubber left in the remaining laps. Razgadiogu diving down the inside gets two for one. Redding is wide into four. Alex Lowe's from third to first. Brilliant from Alex Lowe's to hit the front. Final lap in Phillip Island. Redding comes through for third position. Here goes Lowe's on the inside line for second position. A bold move. Vandermark's going to go the long way round. Lowe's blocks him off. Drag race down to the line. Redding next third position. Brass Gatliogu under pressure. Oh, my goodness. Just incredible in the run down to the line. Less than two tenths of a second separating the top four. We're underway in the Tissot Super Bowl race. Meanwhile, Scott Redding comes through on the inside. Two for one for Redding. Bautista down. Bats diving down the inside of Tom Sykes. Redding diving down the inside. Oh, collides with Jonathan Ray. Top rack comes through once again for second place. Ray diving down the inside for the block pass. Once again, nothing to separate the top four. Welcome to World SBK in 2020. Really is heating up here in Phillip Island at this stage of the weekend. And this is also going to play a big role in just managing that tires. You're going to have to be very careful with it. Race number two then here in Phillip Island gets underway. Five, six riders all in the mix at the head of the field. They're all down. We've got drama. Loris Baz manages to find his way through into fourth position. Loris Baz for the lead. Yeah, Owens Bull and the young Bull. It's all about being patient in these races. Jonathan Ray diving down the inside of Loris Baz, catching him by surprise. And Baz is off once again. Raz Gatioglu appears to have a problem as Alex Lowe's gets down the inside of Jonathan Ray. Ray is not quite close enough. rivals and potentially championship rivals as well. Alex Lowe's wins in Phillip Island! 
biggest thing for the championship. Three different winners in the first three races of 2020. That was indeed some ferocious and exciting action from Phillip Island, Australia, where the World Superbike Championship uh, took place. Moving on, we see behind the scenes of still World Superbike Championship, what normally you wouldn't see on TV, not on TV normally. So you're going, we're going to be bringing that to you today. Not only that, we'll also be bringing you the Haas Garage of the Formula One tests. Normally, you have the test going on before the main season race. And so uh, what happens during the test at the garage of the Formula One test is what we bring to you also. Take a look. Hi, I'm Scott Redding and I'm the rider of the U. <laughs> Welcome to the first off camera of 2020, a look into the weird and wonderful from behind the scenes of World SBK. This should be a happy moment, but honestly, I'm pretty miffed because literally nothing happened in Australia. Nothing. What a dull event that was. I mean, no overtakes, no mistakes, no drama whatsoever. <laughs> Not to mention the chilling presence of motorcycling's number one predator. I don't mean spider snakes or EU emissions regulations, I mean geese to the grill with you. Not that the other wildlife is any less annoying. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Okay, I'll do, I'll do it again. But this was never about the racing. This was about celebrating Australia, celebrating life and the friends we make along the way. Even when you absolutely 100% hate each other. Right guys? Actually, we get along quite well. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I see that things come out, and I'm like, hell, that looks great. He's probably reading that. Yeah, you just got this little one to watch. Fair enough. Although, maybe try not to push your luck early on. Too much RPM, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, it's about time I made something resembling a swift exit. We'll see you next time with more outtakes and some of the best racing around in the Andalusian wonderland of Jerez. Radio check, one man. Yeah, the radio's good. Okay, I hear you loud and clear too. Turn one and two loud and clear and okay to push. Okay, let's push again, let's push again. The temp's coming up. Box remount, remount box. Radio check, Kevin. Radio's good. Yep, loud and clear. A good building, Kevin. The right hand side's still cold, but it is coming up. Okay, we'll box now, Kevin, box now. Ocon 14 behind. Box now. Next is a discussion on insurance and riders or driver's safety at race meetings in Nigeria. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the show. Um, we'll go straight to a discussion on insurance and riders or uh, driver safety at race meetings in Nigeria. And with us in the studio to discuss this issue are um, Larry Ajiboye and uh, Abisola Fadairo of Mutual Benefit Insurance. Uh, welcome to the studio. Yeah. Now, without welcome. wasting more time, can you talk us through the process of uh, getting insurance cover for a race athlete? Um, basically, there's not much difference in getting insurance for the athletes. Um, the athletes or associations or people walk up to any firm, indicate in seal proposal form, supply the information that is required. No? Request for premium, premium is paid and cover is affected. Mm. Okay, but I'm, I'm looking at, is there any need for any specific documents from the uh, person applying for the insurance cover? Any specific documents required by the uh, insurance company? Okay, so depending on who is requesting for it, that would determine the extent of cover that you need. So is it just the athlete? Now, if it's just maybe the team that is requesting for cover for the athlete mm -hmm. alone, so the information that will be required will probably be Age, okay, so is it a different that. process for an, an individual athlete and uh, for uh, an organization? Yes, it, uh, it's not a different process, mm -hmm. but the cover that you, that will be granted will be different. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for the athletes, it's probably they probably just require co cover for them, you know, against death, mm -hmm. accidental death, you know, injuries, permanent disability, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. all of that medical expenses. You know. However, for the organization, they might extend to cover the equipment, they okay. might extend to cover the, the vehicles, mm -hmm. the bikes, you mm -hmm. know, other equipment on the racetrack. Okay. They might even cover, you know, all those other ancillary service providers, mm -hmm. you know. So it would depend mm -hmm. on who is asking, because okay. that would be ta that would determine, determine the, the kind of cover okay. that would be provided. Perfect. Um, but I'm also trying to look at it. Um, why are insurance companies in Nigeria not disposed to uh, giving insurance cover? For well, in the past, um, motor race, motor yeah. racing, yeah. and other similar motor sports, sports yeah. motorsports, yeah. not just motorsports, mountaineering, okay. bungee jumping, extreme sports, extreme yeah. sports yeah. 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 I know they are considered or perceived to be very hazardous. Yeah. You know, so they are a standard exclusion. By exclusion, I mean it's not covered under any normal yeah. insurance policy. Yeah. You know, so ideally, Companies are not willing or eager to provide such coverage. And so, but you know, with statistics are you know trend, this is provided that we've, we've realized that you know, compared to the global number of athletes, mm -hmm. the incidents that do occur are not as you know they're not as bad or they're not as often. It doesn't happen as bad. So, in companies, especially like you know, like ours, are now willing you know to. In like your words, trailblaze, yeah. you know, forge into the new market, mm -hmm. you know, to see what can be done, assist in ways that we can provide the cover. That's that fantastic. Can. But I'm wondering now, why is that other insurance companies are not going into it? I mean, why, why are they not uh, looking at it from the perspective that uh, the organization is looking at it from? I mean, it's, it's supposed to be, like from what you were saying, um, the incidences that occur often. Mm -hmm. I mean, so why is it that insurance companies are not? Well, I might not be able to answer for many insurance companies, mm -hmm. but I would assume lack of information. Mm -hmm. Many people are not, like the awareness for these sports are not as, you know, is not as large, it's not as widespread. Mm -hmm. So maybe many people are not, maybe many companies are not even aware that such sports are going okay. on. You okay. know, because um, um, the organization I work for is very involved in sporting mm -hmm. events generally. Okay. You know, generally, not just particular to this thing. So not, not to motor racing. Yeah. So perhaps that gives us an advantage, you know, mm. access to this kind of information, mm. and that's why we've been, you know, um, um, spoken active. to. <coughs> and, you know, so that maybe that gives give us an advantage yeah. over the others. But yeah. I cannot, you know, I, tell you why. I, okay. Be the case okay. So I, I also noticed something um, from my own experience. Anyway, uh, okay. there are there are there are times I've moved out to try to get. Um, insurance cover for uh, events, motorsports okay. events, and okay. uh, you hear things like, yeah, we, we can cover the 
the race bikes and the the race car race that bikes. you cannot cover you. I mean that's that's the only thing. Okay. Um <laughs> like I've said, you know, sporting and uh, motor motor race sporting or motor racing. Mm -hmm. Whether motor or bike racing, mm -hmm. racing in general. Motorsports. That's motorsports. Sport. Yeah. In Nigeria, it's mm -hmm. still evolving. It's still new compared to you know, when we compare to when we go outside the country. Mm -hmm. So many people are not. Um, they don't have information. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that okay for motor bikes yeah. and cars, even the motor mm -hmm. vehicles, there are already specific insurance policies yeah, that attend yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. However, for the athletes, you know, there is. Sorry, but could that be the reason why um, the insurance companies are now saying that uh, they can insure your bike and your car, um, but not insure you? I well, mean, well, perhaps, I cannot tell you that, yeah. but perhaps that is the reason. Because the bikes and the cars are already there. Mm -hmm. We already know what insurance they provide, mm -hmm. which is standard, mm -hmm. which is, you know, mm -hmm. nationally accepted. Mm -hmm. But for these, many times, it would require maybe. You know, additional trying to get additional information, or you know, so many people might be skeptical about getting involved. Like I said, you know, it's perceived to be a very high risk I industry. Think. It's perceived to be a very high risk industry. So people are skeptical about. But is that not is that not what insurance is meant to cover the high risk? Yes, mm -hmm. no, so insurance is meant to provide it's meant to provide cover for risk. Mm -hmm. But you know we have to balance it so out. There's a difference between higher risk yes. and risk. No, <laughs> no, for me to for me for an insurance company to cover any risk. They need to understand what they are covering. Um, it's not just it's essentially about risk. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yes, risk, whether high risk or low risk. Exactly. It's, it's insurance. I mean, but, if you if you are asking someone to pay a premium for that, then let the person pay a premium. But at least that insurance cover should be there. Thank you. So but why, for why are they me not doing that? to grant that cover, I need to know what benefits are required because it's one thing for me to provide a cover that. Uh, you know, settles one side, you know, that is inadequate, mm. settles one side, but when an incident happens, I realize it, it, the other side is not covered. Mm. And then, aside from that, I need to know what premium to charge. So if I don't understand the risk, it will be hard to grant a cover. So many people will probably just stick to what they already know, mm. you know, the risks that they're exposed to, the risks that they understand. Before, you know, exactly, mm. you know, like, like I say, it's, I'm sure in a couple of months, in a couple of years, when this, you know, the industry becomes bigger, many people will be able to that because now they have little statistics, you know, to base their assumptions on and all of that. You know, it's, like you said, it's covering of risk. Well, I need to understand the risk yeah, before the, I can cover yeah, it adequately. I understand the, the organizational look at it, but okay. the individual look at this same thing is this. Why would um, an individual want to go for insurance for his race bike or race car without getting insurance cover for himself. Why would he want to do that? I mean. Well, so that <laughs> okay. he adequately covered okay. himself. Okay. So what can insurance companies do to deepen or to further make robust the motorsports industry in Nigeria? Considering okay. the fact that um, for us to organize any international race in Nigeria, we have to adhere by standards of uh, the Federation International de Motorcyclismo, which is the governing body for uh, okay. Um, motorcycle racing motorcycle. like MotoGP and the rest mm -hmm. across the world, uh, just like FIFA for football. Mm -hmm. The same also FIA Federation International the Automobile for uh, car racing like you have uh, Formula E and Formula yeah. One. Yeah, so they have these government bodies. And the first things, the most important of all, even is safety and insurance is number one yes. and safety. So mm -hmm. for us to be able to organize these uh, kinds of events in Nigeria, it is very necessary for us to be able to. Uh, have insurance policies that cover uh, race athletes and race events. Now, okay. can insurance companies in Nigeria provide such to further make robust the industry? Of course, insurance companies. How? How? <laughs> how can they do that? Okay. Um, first of all, you know the goal of all insurance companies is to deepen insurance penetration in Nigeria, mm. and. You know, if we're talking about the the, the motorsports industry, yeah. it would um it would it would I feel like many more athletes would be willing to compete or participate if mm. they knew that there was an adequate insurance cover in place. Mm. You know, there will be more potential athletes, and I'm sure even the actual athletes, you know, would have you know there's a certain level of confidence that comes with knowing that there's an insurance and not just an insurance, mm -hmm. there's an insurance cover yeah. that yes. works. Yes. 
that would actually encourage exactly uh, yes. so that would encourage more participants and the more participants we have of course the increase in inclusion in means that the industry is growing right mm -hmm. so as that industry grows it means if insurance is, is an underlying part of that industry mm -hmm. it means that it also it's a collective good for the insurance industry as a whole because it, you know it won't just be um one person reaping the benefits mm. you know it would be that okay yes the, the motor industry the motorsport industry mm. is growing alongside the insurance industry that is mm. providing insurance cover mm. so that would be one way but another way of course would be for insurance companies or other notable brands to throw themselves behind throw their brands behind sponsor sponsorships and endorsements and stuff like that what will be the attraction for insurance companies to go into motorsports, seeing that a lot of them don't do, what would be the attraction? I know your organization has obviously seen something, a gold mine. Mm. <laughs> seen, uh, but what, in general terms, would be the attraction for okay. insurance companies? Okay, the attraction for any company, yeah, not just insurance, insurance not just insurance companies okay. right now, okay. would be profit in the long run, yes? Profit in the Growth. long run. Okay. And for you to make profit, you have to grow. And for you to grow, you have to forge into new waters. Because um, if if we keep retaining the businesses that are already existing, mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to be rotating them, cycling and recycling. Mm -hmm. So the only way to actually grow is to actually go into industries that we haven't been in. Oh, and this is obviously... Yeah. Okay. One, of this is one of them. Yes. So, okay. to any insurance company, I, I, I doubt there will be an insurance company that you speak to about this kind of opportunity, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be willing to. Well, I've had my to. experience, and they were not willing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you probably went to the wrong one. <laughs> Come to the winning side. Okay. 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 And so then um, you know. What's what's your um, the last question actually? Okay. Uh, what's your take on immobility? Well. um Technology is advancing. It's a step in the right direction. There's global warming. We need to reduce our usage and consumption of cells and all of that. So I, I, I'm personally, I'm totally for that. Okay, like, like, like she said, um, the the world is moving forward. We are moving into the future. So we just need to move to change. And you know, electricity is the way forward. So let's just move to it. Mm. Yeah. But, but we need to very fast. Thank you very we much. Have hope. Thank you very much, Abisola, Padero, and Larry. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having, having us. Thank you yes, PLC. Yes. Same here. Thank you. So, um, up next is um, we'll take a look at immobility from the perspective of uh, the Formula E Nissan driver Sebastian Buemi. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Well, I think today the biggest advantage of Formula E is that there is only one category where of electric racing cars. If you want to be part of the game, you have to join Formula E. It's not like with normal combustion engine, you can do rally, you can do Formula One, you can do endurance racing. Here you have only Formula E. So if you want to showcase your technology, you have to join. And, and actually it's really good because it, it makes it a very tough and good championship. We need to further improve everything, and when I see the trend of improvement, it's uh, making me very confident that we're going to achieve it. Because, you know, we need to to improve um, the capacity of the of the batteries. We need to make them lighter. We need to make them better. And then, of course, at some point, we need to focus in making sure we can produce this electricity and energy. But I'm very confident that in the next 10 years, we're going to see a big shift, you know, of people going to electric cars just because they they're going to become much better than the normal cars. It's just now a matter of time, really. It's not a question anymore. Cities like Zurich, Paris, they are pushing very much for electric mobility. Not only electric cars, you know, uh, push bike, wh whatever. And uh, those big countries we have in Europe are the first ones now, and it's, it's going to follow up. The technology needs to further improve just to make sure you will not ask yourself anymore between a normal combustion car and electric car. You know, before it was more trend because the combustion cars were much better. 
where now it's starting to be the opposite. So when you know there is something better, why don't buy it? And at some point, it's not going to be a question anymore whether you, you, you buy it or not. So I would say the technology needs to further improve. And that's it on this edition of Finish Line. Follow us on social media to continue the conversation. I'm Gerard Gogolfe Turu Kusare. Whatever you're doing on the roads, make sure to stay safe. See you next time.